this video we're going to look at uh, timber structures so the first video we're going to look at um, timber structure overview the timber structures are most popular material in New Zealand that is because we have a lot of forests in other countries they don't have as many forests timber is not as readily available and it's more expensive to get and so therefore timber construction is not uh, as popular as it is in New Zealand uh, so the advantages of timber is that it's light it's easily handled, so uh, a 4x2, a 6 metre length of 4x2 for example. By the way, 4x2 means 4 inches wide by 2 inches deep. Americans call them 2x4s, same thing. Uh, so it's 100 mils wide by 50 mils deep, but that's just the nominal cut because when it's trimmed it might be, say, 48 millimetres thick by um, 190 millimetres wide. But um, that's what the that's what we normally use. The normal bit is a bit of timber 100 by um, 50. Um, they can be 75 by 50, but um, most houses are built in 4x2. So the advantage is it's light, easy to handle, uh, minimum heavy tools or plants, so it's often put together by a gang of people uh, with minimal um, equipment. You might have a crane at times, it all depends on what you're doing. It's easily cut to measure, so you just get out a saw and cut it off to length. Uh, it's easy to join to. You can hammer it. You can sorry. You can nail it. You can screw it. You can glue it even. And it's a renewable resource. So um, when they um, harvest the trees, they plant a whole lot of new trees, which will be ready for uh, production in 20 to 30 years. Uh, the disadvantages: it's not highly fireproof. So timber, we all know that wood burns, and timber does that. It's not as strong as other materials. Um, not as strong as steel, or um, and compression it's not as strong as uh, masonry um, but and the other thing is it also needs to be treated it's prone to rot it's a biological uh, material uh, or it was and therefore it can be attacked by fung um, by, uh, by bacteria fungus rot um, and so it needs some sort of protection if it's going to be exposed to that uh, so the connections the way you c we connect um, the timber nails so often a nail gun or a hammer um, so a nail hopefully you've all seen a nail they're just straight bits of, um, of steel with a tip on it and you just bash it in uh, bolts so basically a bolt is you get two pieces of material you drill a hole through them you put the bolt through and then you tighten the nut so there's the nut of the bolt there's the nut there's different types of bolts this is a hex bolt I also know them as engineer bolts um, so you can see it's got a hexagonal head uh, and it's tightened up with a um, spanner. Uh, the Americans will call this a wrench. So you need a um, spanner on one end, spanner on the other, and you basically tighten them together. Oftentimes there's a washer uh, in between, especially with timber, there'll be a washer there on either side to stop you from crushing the timber when you tighten it up. Um, the washer spreads the load across a wider area and therefore it's less likely to um, exert enough pressure to to indent or damage the wood. This is called a carriage bolt and what happens is you drill a hole through them and instead of tightening it up both sides you bash in this side here. So it's got a square um, shape there and so when you hammer that little, when, when you put it into the hole, uh, you hammer it and this punches a square hole in the timber. So then all you need to do is just tighten up the washer and the bolt on the other side. The advantage of this is it gives a really nice finish, it looks nice. Although the um, the, uh, the square hole that you punch here, you can, if, there's too, if you're trying to tighten up too much, it will start to rotate. Uh, and then you've got screws. Um, so you've got screws connecting, um, say, uh, thin pieces of sheet to the walls and stuff like that, which isn't really what we do as civil engineers. But coach screws, which is what these things are called, they are often structural bolts, so you drill a um, hole which is sort of smaller than the diameter of the of the screw, and then you uh, basically uh, screw it in, and so it acts the same way. So this one here, you'd actually often use a uh, a, a wrench or a spanner um, to, to tighten it all up. Now another type of connection is bolted plates and uh, tooth metal plates. So here you've got a bolted plate holding together a heavy timber frame. 
uh, so you can see that that's a steel plate there, uh, galvanized steel. Uh, they've drilled holes right through each one of these beams here and then bolted it with a hex bolt on both sides. So on the other side of that is the hex nut. Um, the, on the other side will actually be another metal plate. So you can see they don't need to use washers because the, the force of the clamping is actually on, a, on, on the steel plate. So all of the, the force is held together on that steel plate. So you can see these prefabricated units here are all bolted together ready to go on site and be placed. Another way of connecting timber uh, is a tooth metal connector plate. Not as strong as these things, but very quick to put in. So you can see they've actually made a, a frame here and they just put the tooth connector plates on on each um, on each point there. And it's a matter of just sort of putting it, it's got a whole lot of teeth there. You turn it over this way and you place it on the joint there and then you hammer it in and the spikes go into the timber to pr produce a joint. There are actually guns that you can use to sort of they just fire the whole plate on at once. Now another version of that is just a, um, a hole pl a nail plate. So what happens with the nail plate is just a plate of steel with a whole lot of holes there and you just put nails through it. It does exactly the same thing. Alternatively instead of using steel nail plates you can actually use plywood. Uh, so you can see here they've got plywood and they just nail those on. So there are different ways of connecting um, light steel. So these things are really only good for um, light, sorry, light timber connections. They're not really any good for these heavy, um, these heavy timber uh, structures, which we're going to look at in a minute. So in the next um, video, we're going to look at the types of timber structures and um, and how they are constructed.